So let's talk about the absorption isotherm a little bit from mathematical point of view. How exactly can we use the data from gas absorption to back calculate what's my surface area? So the first model we are introducing, which is very important for catalysis and also for some ceramic related, is so-called Langmuir absorption isotherm. It's a type of absorption behavior for material that is um, initially, I think, modeled by Langmuir. It's essentially for you to yourself only monolayer coverage, which means the surface after you pull a vacuum and when the gas come to the surface, it only occupy the one layer, nothing two layer, nothing three layer, one layer, and then it's done. Okay. So to get the model, model quite often you would have any model, you have to make assumptions. Okay. The first assumption is simple absorption reaction. Even for absorption, we can write it as a chemical reaction, except uh, as it's for a so-called surface vacant site. As it's not really for a chemical reaction, but it's uh, for a site. For a gas come to the surface, you need a empty site, empty surface site. You see what I mean? So that's what S is for. A G is for your adsorbate. G for G for gas phase. Make sense? A for absorbed. It's a gas molecule that is going to be absorbed, or G for when it's it is in the gas phase. Come to the surface as for surface we can side and becomes A A D. A capital A still for absorbed, but now it's A D for absorbed. It's staying onto the surface not in the free molecule moving in the gas phase. So assuming the reaction looks something like this, which is reasonable, right? And then it's only occurring on read to yourself. Um, where can the absorption occur? Only occur on unoccupied sites. Make sense? If the surface already has a gas molecule absorbed onto it, that side can another molecule cannot go to that side. Common sense, right? Right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we will talk about that later. And then under equilibrium, under equilibrium, the rate of absorption means gas coming to the surface and stay there, and the on unblocked site is the same as the rate of what? Desorption from occupied site. Make sense? Under equilibrium, the amount of gas coming in should equal to the amount of gas molecule leave the system. And the coming in can only come to the unblocked site. Leaving, you can only leave from occupied site. Make sense? That's just a simple mathematical model. And then we have to define a few terms. PA for P for pressure, small p for partial pressure. Because sometimes when we're dealing with multiple gas, but let's just talk about partial pressure. Okay, of absorbate gas. KAD, absorption rate constant. K quite often for rate constant. AD for absorption rate constant. KDE. K is still for read constant, but DE for desorption read constant. As I put a square bracket, as for surface side, square bracket for side concentration or area density. How many sides per unit area? But available sides for absorption. Okay. And AAD square bracket. The concentration, side concentration for what? Absorbed, occupied sites. Make sense? And then the absorption rate. Typically when we think about this rate, rate is rate constant quite often times concentration. So the rate RAD for rate for AD for Absorption equals absorption rate constant times partial pressure of absorbent, right? The higher the pressure, the faster stuff you absorb. 
the higher the rate constant, the faster it will solve. And then as the available site concentration, right? If the surface is fully occupied, which means S becomes what? Zero, then there's no absorption going on. Make sense? So the absorption rate has three terms times together. Make sense? You just think about it. And then desorption rate. Similarly, you can write something like this, right? RDE, R for rate, DE for desorption, it's only two terms time together. Desorption rate because it's stuff leaving the surface. Leaving the surface. Okay? Rate constant times the or solve the or occupied side. Pay attention here, we don't put gas pressure here because it's leaving from, from the occupied side. Gas pressure, that's a secondary thing. Make sense? So, then say, okay, but it must be the, the, the gas pressure must counter influence or the other way influence the desorption. Yes, of course, that comes into so-called equilibrium. Under equilibrium, these two have to be the same, right? These two have to be the same. Absorption rate should be equal to the desorption rate. And then we are going to write something like this. Make sense? It's just uh, left absorption, right desorption. We just write them together. Now we linked rate constant, side concentration, and pressure all together, okay? Then let's continue a little bit. This is what we have from previous page, right? Based on the equilibrium, based on the absorption rate equals the desorption rate, okay? And then we're going to re rearrange the equation a little bit. What did we do? We moved the desorption rate constant to the denominator, right? And we define this ratio as equilibrium constant. We said, okay, based on this, then if we move this guy here, we're going to move PA times S to the denominator on the other side. Make sense? That's from just from the rewrite of the top equation. Okay, this is our so-called equilibrium constant. And then, Remember, the total surface side, the surface, the material surface, the total surface side, if we call it S0, the total side would be the summation of what? What is available, which is S, right? The available surface side plus AAD, the occupied side. Make sense? The total side is just summation of these two. And for any fixed material, the total surface side is a fixed number. Make sense? Different material have different surface side. That's a fixed number. Okay. Then we are going to rewrite the rewrite the equation again. S zero, we keep right. AAD, we still write it here, except for S. S, we write it as what? S, we write it as, go to, huh? AAD divided by PA times KEQ. Make sense? It's just from here and here we get this. Total side is occupied side plus the weakened side. And from here we get the weakened side. Okay? And then, of course, we can rearrange a little bit further. What did we do? We put a common factor from here to here. We put common factor AAD, the occupied side, together. And then denominator, right? And we have 1, we keep, and PA times K, this one. Make sense? That's the right side. That's just a mathematical, pure, simple manipulation. We put the AAD in the front. That's all we do. Okay. 
And then, if we define the surface coverage ratio, if we define surface coverage ratio, which is the side that is occupied divided by the total side, theta, surface coverage, how much percentage of surface side is occupied? AAD, occupied side divided by I0, the total side, okay? If we define this uh, as this one, or the the absorbed volume, absorbed gas volume versus Vm, the total monolayer coverage volume. Make sense? VAD means the amount of gas that is absorbed onto the surface at this pressure. Vm is monolayer, M for monolayer coverage, complete coverage. Surface coverage is this ratio, is site ratio. Make sense? If we define this one, then VAD again is equilibrium gas volume for a particular pressure. VM is gas volume under monolayer coverage absorbed. Okay. If we define this, then we can write the theta. The surface coverage ratio is AAD divided by S0. AAD divided by S0, which means become, we have to inverse this term. Make sense? Become KP divided by 1 plus KP. Okay. And of course, if we rewrite this, remember the theta is also the ratio between absorbed and the monolayer, we can also get this thing. Because this theta, we can also write VAD divided by VM. So the right side, we keep it. It's still the same equation. Okay. And then if for this thing, for this so-called absorption isotherm, now let's take a look. PA is your actual partial pressure. If PA is zero, what is VAD? PA is zero, no matter what happens, my numerator is zero, right? So I should always start from zero. On the other hand, if PA, of course we cannot go to infinity, but let's say KEQ is a equilibrium constant, it's a constant, right? So if P goes higher and higher, let's say go to infinity, what's the maximum of this function can be? It's one plus something, something, right? The maximum it can be is always one. So you see the plot, if we are going to animate, it's going to start from zero, increase, but it has to plateau out. It has to plateau out, okay. 